You've been walking for hours, days maybe, times a blur. As the sun rays cascade over your face, a drop of sweat craters into the earth. Your mouth is dry. You can't remember the last time you had a drink. For all you can recall, you've always been this parched, never quenching that thirst that consumes your thoughts. But as you walk, you see something reflecting the sun in the distance. No, it couldn't be. A spring. It seems out of place, but you couldn't care less. You kneel beside the spring, cup the water to your mouth, and taste. It's sweet. In but a moment, your weariness fades, your vision is clear, and your body is nourished. As relief fills you, memories flood back in. You remember now. You weren't alone. No, you had passed a fellow traveler a few hours ago. Your heart is compelled without hesitation to invite this man to experience the life you found in the spring. In no time you find him. He comes to drink from the spring as well, and as he drinks, joy floods over him, and you vicariously experience the excitement of the moment. He too recalls a group of travelers that he encountered along the way. They must taste of this water, he proclaims. In the blink of an eye, sojourners and wanderers all gather because they've heard about this spring. Rejoicing and celebration fills their heart for once they were thirsty, but now they're filled. In John 4, it tells the story of Jesus encountering a Samaritan woman at a well who's looking to draw water. We find out later on that this woman was engaged in a lifestyle of sexual sin before she met Jesus. Jesus asked the Samaritan woman for a drink, and in response, the Samaritan woman questioned Jesus' identity. Then Jesus said this, If you knew the gift of God and who it was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Jesus later on in the passage goes on to say, Whoever drinks of the water that I give to him will never be thirsty again. This message spoke right to the heart of this woman who sought fulfillment in the things of this world but was coming up dry again and again. But after this woman's interaction with Jesus, she ran into her village rejoicing and proclaiming Jesus as the living water. Isaiah 12, 3 says, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. We were all once the wanderer, the sojourner, the weary traveler, wandering the great desert, trying to navigate our way through the wilderness. On our own, we were slaves to sin, left without hope, but God in his mercy provided him himself as living water that we could taste and find new life in him. Though this is a truly momentous moment in the story, it's not the end, or at least it shouldn't be. Do you remember how the traveler responded after drinking the water from the spring? He wanted to share it with his friend that he met along the way, that he too would partake in the joy that he had experienced. Remember the woman at the well, after encountering Jesus, she ran into her village proclaiming Jesus as this river of life. So what is our response? If I'm honest, sometimes selfishness creeps in. As long as I'm satisfied, as long as I'm nourished, I'm good. Too often fear takes a hold of us. What if they reject me? What if they think I'm stupid for believing in Jesus? Maybe it's laziness. I don't want to put the work in to put myself out there to share Jesus as this living water. But this is what Paul says in Romans 15, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel. So what does ambition mean? It's a powerful desire to do or achieve something. But for Paul, this wasn't about a personal achievement or adding to his trophy case. His was a holy ambition. He made it his mission to share Christ, regardless of the persecution, the hardship, the trials or tribulations that he would experience. You see, instead of waiting for this perfect situation or circumstance to share this living water with others, we ought to make it our ambition to live on mission for Jesus, regardless of the outside circumstance or internal tension we may feel. But how do we even do this? In 1 Corinthians 16, we're told to let all we do be done in love. Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy and love are the fuel that we run on as we make it our holy ambition to share Jesus. And we can be sure that the living water of Jesus never runs dry. In fact, the scripture says that our cup overflows. As you drink deeply of God and the sweetness of his grace fills your heart, let that draw you to share this living water with those in your school, in your youth group, in your church, in your community, in your friend group, that they too would experience their thirst finally quenched by the God who never runs dry.